Hello again, and welcome to another tutorial on Unity and FMOD. Today we're going to be looking at adding footsteps to a movable character. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. As you can see here, I've already made a little playable character. Uh, and it's controlled with these two scripts here, the character mover and character turner script. Um, all you really need to know about these two scripts is that the character mover script uh, moves our capsule here with Unity's uh, input manager, which is here. We're going to be looking at this in a little bit. Um, the tutorials for how to make these two scripts, I'm going to put a link in the description for. So you can follow them and find out how these were made. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do is jump into FMOD and create an event for which we're going to store our footstep sounds in. So I'm going to create a 2D event. We don't need it to be 3D because we don't want the sounds to sound too wide. We just want them to be in the middle. So I'm going to call this footsteps. There we go. I'm going to right click it and click assign to bank, assign to master bank. So now that Unity can access this through uh, FMOD's uh, audio banks. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit command and free on Mac and I'm going to bring up the audio bin. Now as you can see here, I've already got six uh, WAVs labeled footstep concrete. I've already imported these in and I've just put them in the audio bin for us to access now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them into the uh, footsteps event. First I'm going to create a multi-sound by right clicking. Um, I'm going to drag that over here. Now what multi-sound does is allow you to contain multiple audio files and play them in specific or random orders. So if I bring that bin back up again, if I drag those six WAV files into this playlist here, close that, it, let's turn the volume up a little bit just because I know these are quite quiet sounds. If I hit play, you can hear footsteps. If I play play again, you'll hear a different footstep. Cool, so uh, as you can see here, this button here is selected, which means the, uh, the WAV files are gonna be selected randomly, which is what we want. We want them to sound random and different each time. But we can go a step further with this and modulate the volume and the pitch knobs by right clicking and clicking modulation. Uh, so we can modulate them to change each time uh, this event is played. So for volume, I'm going to say uh, each time it's played, we want a difference of five decibels. And for pitch, I'm going to modulate it. Let's, let's, uh, we'll put this up quite extreme for the sake of demonstrating. So if I just quickly, oh, let's not do that. If I quickly uh, loop these sounds, if I hit play, you can hear they are quite different each time because the pitch is quite high. If I take these down a bit, oh, let's do that again and loop them. There we go. So you can see by changing the pitch, we can make them sound different each time. I'm not going to do it that high. I'm going to put it down to about five. There we go. Cool. So let's take the looping off because we don't want this loop in the actual uh, in the in Unity. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to quickly build this as well. Uh, and that's all you really need to do in FMOD. So let's jump back into Unity. So what we're now going to want to do is add a script to our playable character, uh, which allows us to access that audio we made in FMOD. So I'm just going to quickly go over to my uh, audio script folder. I'm going to create a C sharp script and I'm going to call this test footsteps. As you can see, I've already created a footsteps script, so I've made a new one. So let's drag that onto the player. I'll just give Unity a second to create that script. So drag the script onto the player. There we go. Right, so let's edit this script. Okay. Once that's up. So there we go. So let's get rid of all this. We don't need that for now. So I'm just going to copy and paste part of the scripts in. Uh, and explain how they work uh, step by step. So the first thing we're going to need is some variables. So let's copy them in. Put them there. Close that. Cool. So these are the three variables we're going to be using. The first one, as you can see, is a public variable. So we're going to be able to access it in Unity. Uh, the data type is string, which means it uses words or references. Uh, and I've called it input sound and this is basically what we're going to use to select uh, the event we just created in FMOD. Uh, I've also put this line above it, fmodunity.eventreference. 
Uh, and this is basically going to allow us to do that. Uh, so we'll look back at that in a second. The next variable is uh, not public, so because we just need it in the script, we don't need to access it through Unity. It's a ball type, so it's can so this can either be true or false. Those are the only two options this variable can be. And I've called it player is moving again. I'm going to come back to that later. And I've made another public one. Uh, this type is a float, meaning it uses uh, numbers or values, and it can use decimal values as well. And I've called this walking speed. So if I save this script, jump back into Unity we should see uh, the test footstep script update in just a second with the variables I've added, or the public ones anyway. So there we go. So the input sound variable is now there and the walking speed variable is now there. So what I can do is now click this search button. I can click footsteps. And now our event is attached to this script. Uh, I can also adjust the walking speed. As I'm sure you can work out, this basically determines uh, how quickly our player sounds like he's walking. Uh, so I know that by typing 0 0.5, that's quite a reasonable speed to set it at. So I'm going to leave it as that. Okay, so let's jump back into our script and we'll have a look at the next part. So those are our variables. So now we want to add our first function. So I'm just going to quickly copy it in. Uh, we'll put it there. Okay, so this is an update function, which basically means everything in this uh, update function, all of this information here, this is going to be performed every frame that runs in the game. Uh, so the first line says, if input.getAxis brackets vertical is greater than 0 0.01, uh, followed by three other similar um, lines, we want the player is moving variable to become true. So what does this mean? Well, let's quickly jump back over to the input manager and I'll quickly explain that we have two sections here. We have the horizontal and the vertical uh, tabs. If I click horizontal, you can see that here we have buttons that determine how our player character moves. Um, and that's done through, the, like I said earlier, the character mover script. Uh, but all you need to know is that by typing in or pressing one of those buttons, we can move our character. So these are represented in C sharp by numbers. Uh, if we press one of the negative buttons, uh, so either A or left in the horizontal case, uh, this is represented by a minus one. And if we press one of the positive buttons, right or D, this is represented by a positive one. And if neither of them, neither of these buttons are pressed, this is represented by a zero. So with that in mind, if I jump back into Mono Develop, you can see by putting uh, the vertical axis is greater than 0 0.01, we are saying if the uh, positive button of the vertical axis is pressed. So if I go to vertical, our positive button is either up or W. So if by saying uh, if it's greater than 0 0.01, we're saying if W or up is pressed. And I've done this four times for each button. So I've said if either, if it's greater than 0 0.01, that means one of the positive vertical buttons are pressed. Again, for horizontal, if it's greater than 0 0.01, one of the positive horizontal buttons are pressed. I've also done the same here, but said if it's less than minus 0 0.01, meaning it's minus one, uh, then one of the negative vertical or horizontal buttons are pressed. So it basically checks for any of those four situations. If any of those four buttons are pressed, then we want the player is moving variable to become true. Uh, this line does the same thing, except it says if neither of, or if none of those buttons are pressed, i.e. the vertical axis and the horizontal axis is equal to zero, uh, then we want the player is moving variable to equal false. And we can check this is working uh, with these two debug lines. Uh, if I take away these two dashes, these lines become active. So the debug.log function basically says that uh, whatever I type in these quotation marks here is going to appear in our console over here when we run it. So let's clear all that and let's run our console to check that is working. I'm pretty sure I saved it. Oh, no, hold on. I don't think I saved the script. So let me quickly go back into Mono Develop. Click on this, click Save. Uh, now let's jump back in and this check is on our player. Yep, so let's check. Oh, give it a second to just register the script changes. There we go, jump back in. 
And now if I don't press anything, once it's ready, sorry for the slow speed of Unity. There we go. So I'm not pressing any of the WAS or D buttons or up, down, left, right. I'm not pressing any of them. And you can see when each frame uh, goes by, we get this message, player is not moving because none of the buttons are being pressed. Uh, their value equals zero, so we get this message. But if I start pressing W, A, S, or D, we get a, another message saying that the player is moving. Uh, and this happens again every frame. Uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's one or minus one, we get the same message. Uh, cool, so let's jump back into mono developed and copy in our next function. So the next function I've got here is a custom function I've created. Let's quickly bring that down. Place it there. There we go. So I've called this function call footsteps. And this basically says if that variable player is moving is true, then we want to play a sound. More specifically, we want to play whatever sound is attached to our input sound variable, which we determined earlier is the event footsteps. Uh, and we do this with this line fmod unity dot runtime manager dot play one short basically means it's going to play once so now we've got that set up we want to determine how often uh, this is going to be called so we do that with another function I'm just going to quickly copy in let's see put that there there we go so this is a void start function so as soon as the game starts and this script is activated this function will begin uh, and as you know, as you could notice, I've told it to call or to activate the call footsteps function here as soon as the game starts. But I've done it with an invoke uh, repeating uh, line. So what invoke does if if I just wrote invoke and then wrote uh, brackets, uh, write my function in here, which is call footsteps and then put a number here. What that would be saying is as soon as the game starts, I want this function here to begin. Uh, after a specific amount of time. Uh, in this case, I've just entered zero because I wanted it to happen straight away. However, uh, I've wrote invoke repeating, meaning I want this specific uh, function here to play after a certain amount of time, which I said here, but I want it to then continuously repeat after another certain amount of time. And instead of putting a value here, I've put walking speed, which means this will reference our variable up here, which we created walking speed, which we can determine in unity over here. Um, oh, whoops, that's fmod. Uh, I could just go back here and I could just write a number in here. Um, but if we ever wanted to change that value, it'd be a bit awkward jumping back into the script. So this just means we could do it uh, through Unity. One final, uh, for one final function to add then. This would work on its own, but I'm going to add one final function. Um, and this basically says, if, the, if this script is ever disabled, then we want to change the player is moving variable to false. Uh, ooh, let's just get rid of that. Now the reason why we do this is because because this um, because the script uh, accesses the input manager and says whenever one of the buttons are being held, uh, we want the sound to be playing. If you wanted to stop the player, say through something they can control over, maybe like a trigger they walked into, you wanted to stop the player briefly. Uh, if the player was still holding W, A, S, or D, uh, or any of the input buttons, uh, the sound would continuously play, um, even though they weren't moving. So, if you set up a script on that trigger, telling uh, the telling this script to disable when the player enters that trigger, this part here will say, okay, well, when this script is disabled, we want to change player is moving to false to make sure it whether they press the buttons or not. Uh, there won't be any sound heard. So I'm going to quickly save this script now. Let's jump back into Unity. Uh, let's clear all that. In fact, let's just quickly uh, disable these two debug log lines. Uh, this debug log line, by the way, here, this basically does the same as these two, but instead of being called every frame, this will be called uh, by whatever value we determine under walking speed. So in our case, it would be called every 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so let's just quickly save that. Now, moment of truth time. If I click play, uh, I probably should have clicked it then. It's still checking to see if the script's all good. So if I click play, play, there we go. Now if I move, hey, there we go. We get some footsteps. So if I hold W, so 
So every 0 0.5 seconds, we are hearing some footsteps. And if I were to press other buttons, say if I press A and W, or S and D, it just plays one at a time. Cool. So, uh, maybe if you wanted to make it sound a bit faster, we could change that to 0 0.3. Uh, we'll if I go back into the game, let's press play. Uh, because I've shortened the time between each audio file, you'll now hear... It sounds like he's moving a lot faster. Cool. Uh, you may have noticed, by the way, this little warning sign. This is basically saying that we have, in our script test footsteps, we haven't uh, referenced the fact that we could potentially be using 3D audio. So if in FBoard, had I created this event to be a 3D event, it probably wouldn't work. We probably wouldn't hear the sound being played. We'd probably get an error. But because we use 2D, this doesn't really matter. We can just ignore it for now. Uh, and that's all you really need to know for a basic script that allows you to play footstep sounds in FMOD. Uh, so, yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, please feel free to write in the comments of any tips on you know how you go about doing this or how you'd maybe improve this. But, yeah, that's just a quick basic way of getting footstep sounds into Unity. So I've been Henry Scott. Thanks for watching. Please do remember to keep an eye on my channel to check out some more sound design tutorials or tutorials using Unity and FMOD. Uh, and that's it, so thanks for watching.